there are many tropes in the horror genre, but there is none more common or overused than the mirror. Why are we fascinated with the supernatural connection to mirrors? Look at me, Danny, look at me, Danny, look at me. And is it possible to make them actually scary again? That's our goal in this episode of Tropes and Antidotes, Horror and Mirrors. If you want to get more of these videos, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to stay in the loop. We're dealing with horror movies here, so this is your graphic content warning. Now, through the looking glass we go. Mirrors have been connected to the supernatural for centuries. In ancient Rome, diviners used mirrors to foretell their futures, including their own deaths. In Chinese mythology, mirrors are a portal to a parallel world where inhuman creatures mimic our every move. In Judaism, when a family member dies, mirrors in the house are covered to prevent contact with evil spirits. And today, the horror genre continues this tradition. But why? What's so scary about a mirror? Consider this theory. When you look into a mirror, someone is looking back at you. Someone not exactly you. It's a different you. The opposite of you. If you're a good, wholesome person, the opposite you would be evil and deceitful. A visual representation of your darker self. And the world inside the mirror is the opposite of our world. If ours is the land of the living, theirs is the land of the dead. It should be no wonder then why horror movies have used mirrors over and over and over again. And there's the problem. Mirrors have become a tired and cheap trope. <laughs> have we lost the uncanny powers of mirrors forever? Or is there a way to bring them back from the dead? Let's look at some specific subtropes using mirrors and how we might rethink our approach. The trope? It's behind you. Perhaps the most egregious trope is a shocking jump scare when someone or something is suddenly behind you. Closing the medicine cabinet or raising up from the sink. We've seen it countless times and every new example gets weaker and weaker. Even the subversion when there's nothing there has become its own cliche. Perhaps there's no saving this one but there may be one option remaining. The antidote. Make it a surprise. There's something. As soon as we see a mirror, we know something is going to happen. So for the mirror to be scary, how it's used must be a surprise. Like this moment from Midsummer, Danny approaches the outhouse. You're okay. We lose any suspense leading up to it, but it's still shocking because we had no time to prepare for it. In the original Candyman, even though mirrors are essential to the mythology, the filmmakers found at least one way to surprise us. Another way to surprise the audience is to use different reflective surfaces. Televisions. Windows. Water. Anything other than a mirror might catch us off guard and bring some shock back into the trope. The trope? It moves. Another trope we've seen a lot of recently is when the reflection moves independently of the character. These moments play into the long-held superstition of our evil doppelganger. And with the help of visual effects, the early iterations were sufficiently creepy. But over time, they have also become overused. Yeah, yeah, great, thanks. The antidote? Ditch the mirror. No rule says you need a mirror to achieve the same effect. Cameras are another way to capture and reflect our world. 
Movies like Oculus use both the mirror and video cameras to capture these paranormal deviations. In this scene from 1408, the sequence is reversed, starting out of sync the Hotel! and then becoming an exact copy. Hello! There are no cameras or mirrors to speak of, and it makes for a uniquely unsettling situation. Let's look at a recent film that includes these mirror tropes, but brings fresh and creative energy to them. Candyman. Spoilers ahead. The Candyman mythology is centered on mirrors. And the legend is, if you say his name five times while looking in the mirror, he appears in the reflection and kills you. Candyman. Even after a number of films in the franchise, Director Nia DaCosta was able to breathe new life into the trope. One way she does this is with subtlety. When it comes to an exhausted trope like this, less is more. Like in this early scene. Do you see it? Without making it a jump scare and without calling attention to it, a subtle moment like this can be more unsettling and make the audience more invested they can become more engaged knowing that it's up to them to spot these hidden threats. In the art gallery murders, we only see Candyman in fragments, in small pockets of the frame, or in a faint reflection. Watch how subtle this mismatch is between Anthony and his reflection. It's barely noticeable, but highly effective. The endless mirrors and reflections in the elevator scene are the perfect setup for another cliché jump scare. Instead, the shot comes from above, where we didn't expect another reflection. <laughs> the hallway scene isn't played for shock, but for morbid fascination. as Anthony begins to understand his connection to Candyman. 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 In the high school bathroom, we barely see anything. There's even a mirror moment we're not shown. All we get is the limited view provided by a makeup mirror. Again, less is more. Dacasa's take on one of horror's most mirror-centric stories is stylish and reserved. It is perhaps proof that the mirror trope might have some life left after all. I am the sweet smell of blood on the street, the buzz that echoes in the alleyways. They will say I shed innocent blood. You are far from innocent, but they'll say you were. There's no denying that mirrors hold a special mystique. We'll never lose our terrifying fascination with the reflections we see, but we just have to be a little more creative in how we use them. We've come a long way since Dracula's invisible reflection, so where do we go from here? Can you think of any mirror scenes that broke through the cliches? What trope should we cover next? Amnesia. Brilliant. Share your picks in the comments. If you're planning the next great mirror scene, you need a shot list or storyboard to map it out. Check the description to sign up for Studio Binder. It's free to start. Until next time, find a mirror and say Studio Binder five times, and we'll see you very soon.
Ha, 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 ha,